Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Arrow. This is their part number K100C-2060 in an L keyway. That's what one of these cylinders looks like when it comes to you. Here's what it looks like when you have it in your hand. Here's the cylinder. I've taken the time to snap that tailpiece in. I have it horizontally. That's what you'd expect to see it look like in a um, knob lock application. If I had installed it vertically, it'd be for a lever. Um, so this is, what the this is what the cylinder looks like. This would be a typical replacement cylinder that would go into a, to an Aero product. A very generic design in the sense that many other people make generic design replacement lever knob deadbolt cylinders that look just like this. That tailpiece, of course, is going to be fairly particular to the Aero product line. You wouldn't see that tailpiece necessarily in any other manufacturer's product line. There's not a lot of information published about this item right here, uh, and that's not uncommon for lock manufacturers. They don't, many of them don't have extremely deep level detailed information in their catalog such as cylinders. Some do, um, some don't. Aero doesn't for this item. Uh, they don't for, um, they do for mortise cylinders and, and rim cylinders, but not for a replacement cylinder, likely for a lever trim. Um, what you will find from all manufacturers is the information in the price list, and we'll take a quick look at that. Um, now, why are, why are you looking at this cylinder? What would bring you to this video? Let's talk about that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Well, your needs for this cylinder might be like this client that's purchasing it now. They are doing a project where they're maintaining a, uh, and I'm looking at the paperwork here, they're maintaining a large installation, meaning a, an extremely large facility um, I can tell you it's military in background um, and not in the United States and is very possibly a very large physical area. It could occupy several square miles or whatever it might be. Um, so they they have this keyway installed on the, on the premises. Um, this is an L keyway. They know it as a Dominion keyway. I do not have a lot of information about the history of Aero keyways, and it's, it's for a few reasons. A, I'm not an expert at all in Aero keyways based on my lack of solid experience getting outside of the standard Aero A keyway. You know, either five pin or six pin, it's usually five pin, either with the standard bow or the large bow, the, tra the tra uh, trapezoid shaped bow. But they do have other keyways. They do have uh, a couple, uh, one or two systems in a multiplex arrangement. The issue with learning more about it is, and I've spoken to Arrow, and I believe it to be the Medeco, either key records department or master keying department, based on what I've been able to gather indirectly is that the records don't exist. Those filing cabinets where those records should be, they're not, those drawers are empty. Um, so they don't, they don't have that data, and I don't imagine that they've been able to easily go back and do historical info, uh, research about it. Um, I could only fathom that if you are a, a lock manufacturer and you don't have information about your keyways, um, you are reliant on your client base calling you and saying, hey, I have this weird keyway. My client knows that as, as a Dominion keyway. Um, and that was part of the challenge with helping this client. All they knew it was Dominion. Uh, okay, um, I'm familiar with that name. I know that they were a a lock or a key blank manufacturer or both at some point decades past. What the client did have though was a copy, was a blank key that they use in supporting the system. It happened to be by Kaba Ilko. It was Kaba Ilko's A1179L. Well, I'm somewhat familiar with Kaba Ilko. So A, I know that means six pin, 1179. Okay, I know what that means. It's a, it's a standardized keyway from Cabilco. So I'm dealing with a standard keyway in a six pin in my mind. Now it gives me L. Okay, now I've got something to go on. A little bit of research with the factory. Yeah, there's an L keyway that they have. In the, in the Cabilco catalog, we can do some cross-reference work. When I type in A1179L, it, will show, it does show me that key blank and the 
broaching in the cylinder plug, then the client was willing to just ship me internationally one of their key blanks, their Kabe Oko blanks. Two reasons. Two reasons. Number one, I was then able to ensure them that when the hardware comes, I'm going to stick that blank in there and make sure it fits. So checked, that worked. Number two, I was able to provide lots of information to the factory um, should they need it to help identify the proper broaching for the key blank that they know that they use, that A1179L. In the end, it all turned out really, really good. Now, this is the uh, keys that came with it. I ordered this as a 91L O-bitted. And what O-bitted means, it really means zero-bitted. It means that I don't want really any cuts on the key. And that's because I know this client's going to be rekeying the material. Now, why wouldn't I just order it randomly cut? Well, you can. That's great. But I like to order it O-bitted because the factory has to do something to this cylinder in the manufacturing process. They can randomly key it, or they can O-bit it, or they can key it to your specifications. But knowing that this client required no locksmithing services from us, they were going to do all of that in the field, ordering it O-bitted is what you want to do because why? Well, you get two operating keys. You're not going to want these to be the permanent keys, that's for sure. Because you can get you can get the cylinder to turn without that key being all the way in. You would not want that. Not at all. Um, uh, back to knowing that they were going to key the material. Why would we order that? Well, here's why. You're going to get two key blanks with, zero, with the shallowest cut. So now the client, what, whether or not they're going to use these key blanks, they have the option to. They ordered 18 cylinders. They've got, you know... 36 key blanks now. They've got, you know, a handful of money that they can choose to reuse on their project. And I do that because you know the randomly cut keys, they're going to hit the trash. There's more likely a possibility, there's a greater possibility of these keys being recut to be purposed into the system when you order them this way. That's why I like to do that. Also, if you're a distributor like we are, I now don't have to pull key blanks off the shelf. All I have to do is recut these. If you're using a uh, a cutter that's designed. I don't know of a punch machine designed to cut an arrow L, uh, but if you're using a Framen, if you're using an ITL, if you're using a Blitz by HPC, uh, a Framen, um, I don't remember, the, a number five? I don't remember the name of my key machine. It's a, it's a, you're originating keys by, with the Framen, you're doing it by, from depth and spacing data, by the depths of the cut. Uh, the internet, the ITL International I, 9000, maybe I have no experience with that. My my Blitz, my HPC Blitz, yeah. If I've got the card, I'm cutting these, and I'm sure that I have an Arrow card. <laughs> I think it's probably in the standard package, so I can then take this key and I can originate the blanks for the system. And I'm great. Then I can duplicate them. Um, is what I would like to be able to do. Now I had said depth and spacing data earlier. What do I mean by that? Well, I ordered these O-bitted which is just zero-bitted. Now, I had said the word depth and spacing data before. Basically, what that is is a chart that tells you the depth of the cut. And I know that this is O-bitted or zero-bitted. Arrow, I believe, is zero to nine. There's a, uh, it's what we call a two-step system. There are ten cuts in arrow. I don't know the max. It's probably six or seven. Um, I ordered these zero-bitted, or what we would say O-bitted, and I explained earlier why. Um, but I know that it's O-bitted because I measured the key. Referring to the depth and spacing data uh, that Arrow makes available, also HPC does a phenomenal job with making that available for scores of different manufacturers. It basically is a chart that says uh, cuts zero through nine, or whatever the manufacturer system is, here's the root here's the cut depth the depth of the cut is measured from the root of the key to the lowest point of the cut that's 0.312 with arrow well i put my caliper on here and i can tell you it's 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 a zero cut because my caliper tells me that it's i mean i'm getting 0.313 on my caliper yeah so yeah that's that's a zero cut you know the root here if you're familiar with locksmithing at all, you might say, you might know that, like in Schlage, a four cut is shallower than a seven cut. You would expect a four pin to be shorter than a seven pin. But when you looked at the depth and spacing data, the value for a four will be a greater value than a seven because there's less of the key that's been cut away. Okay? 
technically with a depth and spacing chart, you could take a blank and a file because it will also give you the shoulder to the center of the first cut and then the successive cut to cut center line, uh, center point, um, the center line of this cut to the center line of this cut. It will give you that. So theoretically, you could do that. Um, that's one of those things in locksmithing. You know, I can be a locksmith per se. Um, because I know how to do it and my hands can work the way that they're supposed to. But that doesn't mean you, you know, that I could, you know, successfully pick a lock or impression a key or originate a key by, uh, by hand with a file. That's, you know, that, that's your Renaissance man sort of skill and technique when it comes to that stuff. So uh, now, as I said earlier, also, there's not a lot of data uh, published about this. You're going to want to be careful with uh, obitted uh, products like this. I can take that and I can turn that around. Um, I can also manipulate that. You know, this it, it won't work very well when it's in the uh, state that it's just sitting here. If I were to take this and spin it 180 degrees, those top pins are going to fall into the broaching in the back of the cylinder plug. And while and I'll do it. Okay, now it's stuck there. Okay, that's not that's not good. I'm trying to put the key in there, that's not going to work. Um, And just simply knowing how these locks work, I can take a thin instrument. This paper clip was closer than my pick set. I can take my paper clip, clip, clip and stick it in there and push all those pins up. Or out of the way. And get that to spin. Oh, it'll work. might need my pick set because my paper clip is a little too um, yeah, I'll have to get my pick set excuse me I'll get my pick set so yeah we just needed to take that cylinder apart what happened when I turned it around the um, the pins are so short that they get hung up in the bottom of that broaching that's there. And then the springs protrude down into the broaching and the cylinder plug as well. Now it doesn't turn right. So in order to get that taken apart, you've got to pull out pull out the springs that are in the way, uh, get your plug follower, pull the plug out, um, put new springs back in, load your top pins, and then put your plug back in. So it's just a, a short operation in order to do that. The point of going through that was to say, when you're dealing with O-bitted or one-bitted locks, they don't operate normally. Don't treat them like a normally keyed cylinder, um, especially without the key in them, because that won't happen with the key in it, because the root of the key is acting as a bridge for the driver pins to not get caught on. So the driver pins are up here. So the root of that key is preventing that from happening. But when I pull that key out, and I can get that cylinder to turn, I go further, I'm going to trap those, those pins where they should not be uh, getting to is the bottom line. Okay. Now, um, probably enough with the locksmithing uh, uh, lesson. Let's look at the supporting information that we do have available on this item, and let's do so now. Let's switch to the screen view. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, here is our um, item that we're looking at. Let's take a look at some photographs that we have here. There is our label. Here are the contents. Close up of our cylinder, side view of the cylinder, front of the cylinder plug. By the way, this is called the Bible. That's the feature of the cylinder housing that's called the Bible, or the, the um, shell. It's just the technical, that's the locksmithing term for that um, part of it. This is all the Bible. This contains your 
springs and your uh, driver pins or top pins sometimes called close up of that L keyway broaching in the cylinder plug you can see right at the top of the crowning of that zero pin so they're very short very short pins that you can see the top of the crowning that is not advantageous necessarily to have a pin that you can read from the front of the cylinder plug if I know what that looks like and what that means I can tell you the first cut on your key at the bow is a zero cut you don't want to give that information away if you don't have to there's the back side showing your spring ring that's here and then your c-clip that's here your tailpiece and then your two keys okay now uh, not a lot of documentation at all so let's go to the manufacturers page as seen here and let's pull up the product catalog now they call this a 100c I believe it to be a k100c uh, actually no 100c is what they have it as so here we go 100c comes up with something 100c dash RK is RK series that might mean the tailpiece is going to be specific to the RK they show it again as a 100cr this doesn't apply this is small format but when I do a search in here for the K100C, nothing comes up. Um, but they do have a 100C reference, so that tells us more information about it. Product line cylinder, mortise cylinder. Okay, so what they're saying is here for the RK lock, that, that grade 2 cylindrical lever, I believe, you'd use a 100C. Um, Now, I had mentioned, I may have mentioned the price list earlier. Let's take a look at that price list. Let's do a search for K100C. Yeah, and there it is, definitely. So that is And as we're researching this, I can see what the error is. The factory sent us the 100C and not the K100C as I had in indicated earlier. Um, the K100C is going to give us deadbolt style cylinder with three deadbolt cam bars and three key and knob and key and lever tail pieces with washers. Mm, that could be a challenge. That's that's inherently the difference right there. So 100C is for that MK series or RK. The one the K100C is going to be a different cylinder platform altogether. That's the that's the news on that. So that's all that we really know about this. It's the only instance where that part number shows up in the catalog. Okay. Now, there's a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page. And when you click on that, you can pull up not only all of the Aero products that we uh, have available by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog here. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now, in conclusion that we've discovered this is a 100C and not a K100C, um, by means of the only documentation that exists, we'll have a future follow-up video on a K100C. So this is going to work in the MK series, which I believe are their knobs, and this will also work in their... RK, which is their levers. They're grade 2 locks either way, but there you go. That's an RK. So this cylinder, when I put the tailpiece back, when I put this back together and put the tailpiece back in, I installed it vertically, which is how you would see it on a, um, on a lever. Okay, if you have any questions on the Aero 100C or any other Aero product, please feel free to reach out to us, and thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.